Hey, it's Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and today we're going to be talking about plasma cutting, and specifically, we're going to be talking about the cut height, or the height from the torch tip to the material, and why it's so important that you keep that at a certain height and consistent while cutting. I want to start off by saying thank you to a few people. Um, there have been quite a few people who have asked about this in the past, but none have been quite as consistent and as uh, uh, eloquent as my friend Bill. Bill asked me this question a while ago, and he wanted to know if the plasma cam system uh, has, you know, how you set the height and if it uh, can adjust its height on the fly. Um, and the answer to both of these is yes. You know, you have to be able to cut. Uh, you have to be able to set your heights. And for certain plasma cam systems, once you got into uh, a little bit higher, not only did it have dynamic height control, but it also uh, has adaptive control. So um, it uses arc voltage to, to do some of these things. But let's talk a little bit about, uh, and so and thank you for the idea of doing this video. Uh, sorry, I got off, got off topic for a second. But um, let's talk a little bit about why this is important. And it's actually just as important if you're doing oxyacetylene cutting. Right, but uh, you know, we're specifically, I'm going to be talking about plasma uh, and how it works, but also um, a couple of things in here that are um, things that you might not understand or might not know about using plasma cutters. It doesn't, it has nothing to do with the, the type of cutter you use, it doesn't have anything to do with the type of, um, with, you know, like I have a plasma cam system, you could be using a homegrown system, you could be doing it by hand. What we're going to talk about today, the principles we're going to talk about are all exactly the same. When you do have CNC systems, it allows you to dial things in uh, rather precisely, but you may not have that, and you know, this is still just as, uh, just as relevant. So let me change camera angles, and we're going to look at a couple of things here uh, because it'll help illustrate things. All right, I'm going to be kind of working around the camera. And so this will be interesting to see how, how we do here. But um, a plasma arc, so here's, let's say here's the, the tip of the, of the plasma cutter, right? When the arc is initiated, so basically you've got an electrode in here, right? There's your electrode. There's a ring that kind of goes around, right? And then you've got a tip with a small hole uh, in the tip, right? So that's just really, you know, I probably have a, a better picture I can show you. Yeah, I'll show you, I'll show you a picture in a minute. But basically, when the arc's initiated, it actually comes out, and this is you know, exaggerated a little bit, but it comes out not as a cylinder, but actually um, as this oval shape, okay? So, when we're looking at cutting metal, depending on how high your metal is, see that angle there, right? It's going to cut, if your metal were, you know, if you were real close, it would cut at different places. The sweet spot is right here, where it's pretty flat, right? Um, so there's lots of things that can cause some of those beveling, but the height that we're looking at, right? So the height from here to here is pretty critical, right? This is your optimum, that's your optimum height of the material, okay? So when you're when you're working by hand, when you're using it on a on a uh, an actual like a CNC machine, this is what uh, what we're shooting for. Um, other things to keep in mind, and I'm not going into techniques on how you use plasma cutters or other different types of cutters, but um, things to keep in mind are: uh, Do you actually start at your cutting height, or do you start at a higher point for piercing so that any metal that turns up has a place to go until you get through it. Um, you know, I know when I was learning on uh, oxyacetylene, you know, they taught us to take that torch and lead into it a little bit, right, and then straighten up. 
Um, so, you know, that you're getting the heat coming, you know, that you are basically putting some heat into the direction of cut, right? A little bit straighter, but, you know, a little bit into the direction of cut. Same kind of thing can happen with this as well. It just depends on the material you're cutting, okay? So I'm not getting into any of that kind of technique. We're only talking about why height control is so important. Um, let's switch this out. And let's take a look. I don't know how well you guys can see this. It looks okay on the viewfinder, but this is uh, the manual that came with my Hypertherm uh, Power Max 85. Actually, if I go a little bit further down, you can see that. It's, it's 3 10. All right, so here's just for mild steel. And this is the stuff that I typically work with. Now, I'm going to go up so you guys can see this because what we're talking about are a few things. On the one column, we've got the amperages that you can run, right? So 30, or 40, uh, 5. I actually have some stuff that I've tweaked a little bit here. And you can see how dirty this is because I use this page a lot. Um, it's also showing your flow rate, right, for your air. But in here, there's a few really critical things. Um, pierce time. So how long does it take, once you initiate the arc, for it to actually melt away enough metal to get through to the bottom, okay? Um, pierce height. You notice it's 250% of cut height, right? So how high should I be while I'm waiting for it to blow through? How high should I be? And then cut height, right? So in this case, it's almost universally 0 0.06 for this particular uh, cutter. So the manual tells you all of these things. The other things that it tells you here is your cutting speeds. Like for me, I do a lot of 11 gauge. I do it at 40 uh, amps instead of 45, and I do it at 90 inches a minute, right? Um, that's just some things that I've worked out that I know I get a little bit more dross, but 90 to 100 inches a minute is the sweet spot for my machine uh, because I do a lot of lettering and things like that that need to have very clean uh, cuts. So I've worked this, you know, this one out. Um, yeah, so that's, that gets you a pretty good idea of, of this part of it. But the other thing, you know, when we're looking at recommended and maximum cut speeds is you also have your voltages in here. And so that voltage, if you've got a machine that can measure the voltage that's happening uh, during that cut, it can automatically adjust its height based on that. Okay, so let me get a different angle and let's, let's take a look at how we do this. All right, I do a lot of stuff with CNC. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of spoiled in that with my cutter, um, it's got an electrical sensing capability in there to where the plasma cutter, it comes down, it touches off, it knows because it, it basically shorts the, um, the sensor, it knows when it touches off, so it knows where its, its start is, and it can automatically adjust. Uh, it's, it goes up that 0.15, in, or, yeah, 0.15 inches for piercing, and then automatically comes down to its cut height and does what it's supposed to do. But, you know, I used to do all this by hand, and um, I didn't always have a machine that had the uh, automatic adjustments. So how do we do that, and how do you get a feel for that? Well, one way to do that is with gauge blocks, right? You can come in with your gauge blocks. Let's see what do I have here. Here's fifty thousandths. Okay, so here's my gauge block for my pierce height, right? So you can come in here and set if you do have CNC, you know, um, and you but you don't have that automatic uh, <coughs> setting. You can come in. And basically, get this to where you can just you, know, you can't really slide it underneath there anymore. Just barely can slide it underneath, right? Or if you're not going to do a pierce height, if you're going to, um, oh my goodness, I just pull this one out and then there we go. Uh, actually, it was the wrong size. This is the point one fifty, right? But you can do the same thing, right? Your sixty thousandths, and you know, 
just so you guys understand this, sixty thousandths is not a you know it's not a heck of a lot. They want that. I mean, I don't know how well you can see. But take a look at that. That's the height that they want you cutting, right? You're almost touching the material at that point. So keep that in mind when you think you are, um, when you think you're too close. You, know, you might be, but you know, try, try, you know, try getting a feel for what that, uh, what that should be. That will really make a big difference. But well, what if you don't have? What if you don't have gauge blocks? Well, there's other things that you can use, right? You can do the exact same thing. Let's say you've got something really simple like drills. Okay, a one sixteenth is sixty-two thousandths. If you take that side of the one sixteenth, right? and bring your cutter down to where you can just barely get that 1 16th through there, that is your 60 thousandths. So, um, if you are trying to do your pierce height, 5 30 seconds is 1 56, right? 6 thousandths high, but it's pretty close, right? There's lots of ways to get that height and figure out that height. You don't have to have expensive tooling to do it. Although if you've got a plasma cutter, you're already getting into that point where you know, some people might call that an expensive piece of equipment. All right, let's stop here and look at how we do this specifically in the plasma cam All right, system. so we're in the plasma cam system at this point. Uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to initialize my machine, which is that racket you're hearing in the background. What it's doing at this point is it's setting itself to its maximum Z height. It moves to its uh, X and Y uh, home positions. We're getting a lot of feedback from the speakers. Yeah, this plasma cam system, I tell you, it's got some serious RF noise. Okay, so let's talk about what we're gonna do here. So we were talking about cutting uh, and the heights. So we're gonna go to settings and we're gonna look at our actual settings uh, in this, for this machine. So we're going to look at two things, machine control and height control. And we're going to get this information right from that chart. Now, at 45 inches a minute, I'm sorry, at 45 amps for 14 gauge, we're at 280 inches a minute. Now, that's a little fast for what um, I'm going to be doing today. So I'm actually going to turn this down to 30 amps and use the, the 30 amp setup. So I know that I want this to be 90, uh, 90 inches a minute, and it's a 0.2 pierce time, and that's fine there. Height control, so we're telling it the thickness of the material, and this is the part where I was saying to use height control. So there's our pierce height, and we're going to tell this to go to 0.06. But notice it's sensing its material, right? So it's automatically sensing. And here, cutter location adjustment. These are one of these things where I can say, hey, auto adjust for my Z height and auto adjust the voltage automatically, right? Now, I can, if I know exactly what I want this to do, I can come into my height control and deselect standard settings and give it its, you know, all the different changes in here that need to happen. But what's nice about this is the first time it goes to cut, it's going to actually touch off and set these, uh, these uh, settings uh, automatically. Right, so this is important for a couple of reasons. Right? Where arc voltage shift becomes really important is when we're going over material that's not perfectly flat. And we all know that sheet metal is not flat. It has a bow to it. Not only that, but it warps while you're cutting it. Um, lastly, in the most extreme case, and this is the one that everybody shows in all their marketing you know, stuff, is um, corrugated material, right? It's not flat. It has, you know, things that go up and down in it. It's got the waves built, you know, pressed into it. So uh, arc voltage shift is really helpful because it adjusts automatically. If it, if it senses that the material by voltage, right, by that shift, if it senses that it's adjusting or that it's getting too close, 
it's going to automatically raise itself. And it'll, it can do that for you know, a few inches of travel to, uh, to compensate for it. So um, it does make a big difference because what it does is it optimizes where in that uh, oval we're cutting, right? And so you get that nice straight cut. So all I have to do now is click OK. And this one, actually, I haven't put the cut paths in. Um, easiest place for me to hide a cut path might be about here. Automatically convert. Now, I'll go through before I do anything. I want to make sure that things like this right here, you know, I'll clean up some of these cut paths. I don't, I don't really like the way that's going to look. So I'll fix this up before I do any cutting. But um, I'll tell you what, I might. Uh, I might include the cutting in this video. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. So let me let me come back. Uh, I'll include what the uh, the cuts look like, and um, that'll wrap this this uh, video up. Since well, one of the nice things about doing this in fast forward is it's really evident that that height is going up and down. So what you can see is it uh, it touches off. It gets its uh, voltage uh, zero, right? So it knows where the base you know, zero Z zero is, and then for each uh, cut. It starts a little high at 0.15 and then drops down to the 0.06 and does its cut. So you get to see it here. Hey, thanks for watching today. I really appreciate it. Um, if you got a little bit of something out of this, uh, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment. Um, if you haven't already done so, uh, click that subscribe button. That uh, really helps me out. Uh, and uh, once again, I wanted to say thank you to uh, those of you who are supporting the channel via Patreon. Uh, my top patrons, uh, Tom, Cole, Zach, and uh, Jason. I, I really appreciate it. I just wanted to uh, get that out there. Uh, thanks again, guys. I really appreciate that. Um, We've got uh, some deliveries coming over the next few days, so uh, I'll be shifting uh, to that for a little bit. But uh, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.